Let's look at how Microsoft Project deals with calendars by default. I'm going to create three tasks here. I'm going to make them each a duration of four days and I'm going to link them together. You will notice by default Microsoft Project assumes that Saturday and Sunday are non-working times. That's why task B and task C, while they only take four days of work, they're going to take six calendar days because they happen to span a Saturday and Sunday. We can alter that. We can make Saturdays and Sundays working times, or we can give time off and say that, for example, we don't work on Fridays. We have a, a wide range of options for what we can set for calendars, basically any possibility that you can think of. We can apply calendars in several different locations. By default, our project starts out using the standard calendar. If we go to our project information dialog, you'll see here that the base calendar is set as the standard calendar. We can also override the calendar for specific tasks. So if I want to use a different calendar for task B, I can certainly do that. Now this is kind of interesting because it shows one of the things that's going on internally with Microsoft Project. Let's say that task B was something like uh, draining a pond or something like that, and we could have a pump doing this task, and that particular resource could work 24 hours a day. If I assign the 24-hour calendar to task B by double-clicking on the task information dialog box, coming to advance, and choosing the calendar as something other than what the standard is for the entire project, for example, 24 hours, you'll notice that the duration of this time, even though it still says four days, has been shortened greatly. That's because Microsoft Project used four days as being four eight-hour days. And it says, oh, that's great. We can get that done in just a little bit over 24 hours. Okay, so we can get this done in 36 hours, and we'll go ahead and start as soon as task A is done. We'll go ahead and start that on Thursday night and evening and work through till Friday, and we'll be done with that, and we'll be uh, ready to go on to task C. So even though it still says four days here, when we say four day days to Microsoft Project, that's what it's thinking of is, is eight-hour work days when we're using the standard calendar. Okay, So because the project is set that way uh, and this particular task has been given a different calendar, then that's why we see that kind of weird behavior. I'm going to change this back to none and we'll see that our timeline reflects our four working days again. Now let's look at how we can actually alter our default calendars. We do this by going to the Project ribbon and coming up to Change Working Time. This shows us our standard project calendar and it shows us all the days for which we do work and it shows us our default is to start at 8 a.m., work till noon, have an hour for lunch, and then work again till 5. And it shows us that on the Saturday and Sundays, we are not working. Now we could alter the standard project calendar, but probably the better practice is to actually create a new calendar. So I'm going to create a new calendar, and I'll call it the Ninja Calendar. And it's going to be a copy of the standard calendar. So I could create an entirely new base calendar, but then I'd have to set all the parameters. What we want to do is just create this calendar just for us ninjas, and we get, we're going to give us ninjas certain days off. So let's start out with a holiday. We're going to start out with a holiday that occurs every year on the 4th of July here in the U.S. 
Now you'll notice that in 2015, when I'm creating this video, the 4th of July happens to lie on a Saturday. However, our ninjas are going to want a day off for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that Friday before. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put July 4, 2015. And once I do that, and uh, if I just click into the next cell, it should make that an exception for, in this case, the 3rd. Okay, so this is the holidays, July 4th. We're going to take the 3rd off. Now, unfortunately, for exceptions like this, we have to do this for every year on July 4th. Because you'll notice, for example, it occurs on a Monday and not we wouldn't want to give them the third again, right? So what I'm going to do is click here. I'm going to click July 4, 2016. Oops, there we go. <clears throat> and I click down to the next line and it will create that exception for me. Okay, so it shows that these are non-working days at this point. Now, if we have something that occurs every year, for example, uh, I know that uh, the uh, first, um, I'm going to have Labor Day is going to be the uh, first Monday of every September. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, click on this first uh, box here. Actually, I guess I should go back and do this in the previous year the 7th, and I can say this is Labor Day. Now once I set this, I can come in here and I can click on this Labor Day exception, go to Details, and here's where I can actually set a range of recurrence and a recurrence pattern. So I can say this happens every year on September 7th. No, not really. It happens every year on the first Monday of September. I can then say whether I want this reoccurrence to end after, let's say, six years or seven years, or end by a certain calendar date. Okay, We cannot set this to just go on forever. Okay, So I'm going to say that uh, I want the first Monday of September off on a yearly basis for the next six occurrences. Okay. You'll notice there that I have a date range then that starts September 7th, 2015 and ends September 7th, 2020. Now we can also set an entire range. Let's say that we want to give that entire uh, week off or let's just uh, choose perhaps um, the next week. We'll choose the uh, 14th here and I will say that this is the week that we normally uh, conduct our inventory. And so we're all going to have certain people working in. All of our ninjas are going to be gone that week. And so we can allow this to start on the 14th. And I'll click over here and I'll say, well, this doesn't end till the 18th. So now we have all these calendar dates that have been exempted. So I can then apply this ninja calendar to my projects. I can uh, apply it to... Um, specific tasks or specific resources that we are having perform those tasks. We can also change the working time. For example, for a, uh, a Saturday here on the 26th, let's say that we're actually going to uh, change that. So we're going to change this to work on the 26th. And we'll come in here and we'll set the working times now for what's going to happen. on that particular day. Okay? So it's a little bit different. Now we're saying we're actually going to work on the 26th of September. We did that by entering the exception down here, clicking on details, and changing the, uh, that from being non-working time to being working time. And then we can set the different periods of work there. OK, 
Okay, so that should give you a good introduction on how Microsoft Project uses calendars by default and how we can alter those calendars.